Good morning. Arise, shine, for the light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon us. Isaiah 60, verse 1. I'd like to welcome everyone to our worship service this morning. Uh, I am Pastor Penny Corey, and we are truly blessed that you all have come here to worship with us. We gather together today to remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. We are a congregation filled with people who love the Lord Jesus Christ and seek to share the gospel message, making disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. So we would also this morning like to give a warm welcome to any visitors that we have. We want to connect with you. And so we ask that you fill out our visitor card that's in the pew racks and place it in the offering plate as you leave today. I want to remind everyone that the last listening post for the Rappahannock District uh, with our district superintendent is this afternoon at 3 p.m. It will be a Zoom meeting and the information for that Zoom meeting has been sent out to everyone by email. During the month of uh, February, we are receiving a special offering for Heart Havens. As many of you know, <coughs> Heart Havens has six Heart Haven homes across the Virginia Conference. This is where men and women with developmental disabilities are empowered to be full members in the body of Christ and active participants in their community. So send your love to Heart Havens this month with your generous gifts of love. You may write a check to KUMC and put Heart Havens on the memo line. We want to um, give a big thank you to our handbell choir this morning for playing for us with their special music and giving of their gifts and their talents. Let us stand for our call to worship. We are called here to God's temple to love God and love people. We are a holy people, and we gather in the holiness of God's love. We are called here to be filled with God's spirit, to learn God's laws, to experience his love, and to receive his abundant grace. We are the children of God. Teach us your ways, O oh God. Let us pray together. O oh, Holy One, blessed in your church, set us upon the teachings and foundations of Jesus Christ. Unite us in your love. Open our eyes to see your peace as we strive for acceptance and agreement among your people. Let Jesus be our guide. We pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. I invite you to turn to hymn number 467, Trust and Obey.
We want to invite our children to come down to the center uh, for children's time. I want to tell you something about Pastor Penny. You may not know, I like yard sales. (laughs) Does anybody know that out there? How many people out there like yard sales? Come on. (laughs) Well, I went to a yard sale yesterday. And at the yard sale, they had a beautiful cup. And I got it. Does anybody know what that says? Peace. Does anybody know what peace is? What is peace? What is it? It is gratefulness and, like, a lot of goodness. A lot of goodness. It takes a lot of goodness to be peaceful. And it means to get along with everybody. Peaceful. <clears throat> and so, I want to read you a story this morning. It comes from Genesis chapter 26. And it's about a man named Isaac. Isaac had many large flocks of sheep and goat and many herd of cattle. And he had many servants to care for the animals. He needed to live in a place that had plenty of grass and plenty of water. Isaac's neighbors became jealous of him. They saw how well his crops had grown, and they were envious of all the sheep and the goats and the cattle that he owned. In fact, they were scared of Isaac because he was so wealthy and so powerful. Years before, Abraham, that is Isaac's father, had dug a well in the land where Isaac was living. Because of their jealousy, Isaac's neighbors filled up their well with dirt. Now, what's usually in a well? Water. They filled up his wells with dirt. And the king asked him to leave the country. Well, guess what? Isaac did not fight because he loved peace. So he took his family, his servants, his herds, his flocks, and moved to another valley to live. Again, Isaac had trouble. The shepherds who lived in this valley said, this is our land and this is our well. Again, Isaac responded peacefully and he said to his servants, dig another well. But again, there was a fight over this well. Once more, Isaac responded peacefully. He had his servant to dig a third well. This time, no one claimed it. This one, no one fussed about uh, with Isaac and his family about using their water. And Isaac and his family were left alone. Isaac was happy, and at last, the Lord had made room for us all in the land to live in peace. So when you think about peace, it's everybody trying to get along. So I want to ask you a question. Did Isaac obey the Bible verse that says, try your best to live in peace? He did, didn't he? Yes. Well, you know, we can't all be in peaceful times, but we can have peace in us. Do you understand that? There might be troubled times all out here, but inside us, we can have peace because who's inside of us? Jesus. Jesus and God is inside of us. So there will be times when those around you will want to cause trouble. When that happens, remember the words of Jesus when he said, Happy are those who work for peace, for they will be called the children of God. And so remember when you worship God, when you go out in your community, when you go to school, to live in peace peace. Let us pray. Dear God, help us to be peacemakers rather than troublemakers. In Jesus' name, amen. So I'd like to give you a mint. Take a mint. There you go. And thank you for coming. Now's the time that we uh, come to God with our thanks, our praise, 
and our intercessions for others. And uh, so I'd like to um, lift up some prayer concerns. Um, we want to lift up Richard Tucker. Uh, he will be having a pacemaker put in tomorrow at Regional Memorial Hospital. We have great news about Keith Miller. He is home from the hospital. Continued prayers are needed as he has home health nurses coming in to check on him. He will continue on dialysis three times a week in Tappahannock. Prayers also for Bev as she continues to take care of Keith. Also good news about Jim Conley. Jim is home after having a pacemaker put in at St. Mary's Hospital on Thursday. He had third degree heart blockage and the ventricles were pumping only at 20%. So we are just praising God that Lynn was able to get him to the hospital. He still has issues with his pancreatitis, which the doc doctors are watching. Sympathy prayers for the family of Sharon Crandall. Her funeral will be this afternoon at Maple Grove Baptist Church. The family will receive friends 1.30 to 2 prior to the service at 2. Uh, Lynn Manley, our uh, Rappahannock River District uh, office manager, shared a prayer request with us. She said, I would like to ask for prayers for my college roommate, Kathy Gould. She has been a missionary in Ukraine for 29 years. She works with at-risk families and children. She has made her, name, her home in Kiev and doesn't plan on leaving the country. She and her team are now relocating from Kiev to another city in the western part of the country. She asks that we continue to pray for peace in Ukraine. Lynn also asks us to specifically pray for Kathy's safety as well as that of, the, of her team and other missionaries and the body of Christ that is there in um, in Ukraine. It is a very uncertain time for all of them. We also like to ask uh, prayers of sympathy for the Hoare family. Emily Hoare's grandfather um, <clears throat> passed away on June the 9th and his memorial service is February the 26th. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> Um, Courtney asked uh, to pray for her friend, Parker, because he is, he is four years old today. <laughs> uh, so let us go to the Lord in prayer. Worthy is the Lamb. Thank you, Jesus Christ, for all that you have done for us. Worthy are you who was slain on the cross of Calvary for our salvation and the salvation of the world and the forgiveness of our sins. He is worthy to receive thanks and glory and wealth and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and praise. For we praise the name of the Lord. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord, wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Thank you, O oh God, for completing the good work that you have begun in us and in our congregation. Keep us as the apple of your eye, and may peace and love abound among us as we hide under the shadow of your wings. O oh Lord, fill us with caring, generosity, agape love, and a sense of security of being held in your loving arms. Help us to see and to serve one another as more important than ourselves. Humble us and use us to build up the kingdom of God here in this place and at this time. Let there be light. Almighty God, you have poured upon us the light of your incarnate word. Grant that this light, enkindled in our heart by the Holy Spirit, may shine forth in our lives this day and this week through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. O oh God, whose glory it is always to have mercy, 
Be gracious to all who have gone astray from your ways and bring us again with penitent hearts and steadfast faith to embrace and hold fast the unchangeable truth of your word. Direct the body of Christ here at KUMC to fulfill your purposes at this time and this place. Oh, Jesus, you are the great healer. You are the one who made us and knows how to mend us. You are the great physician who can heal us, body, mind, soul, and spirit. Reach out with your anointed healing power to those names that we have mentioned today. Fill them up with the Holy Spirit as they call upon you. We pray, O oh Lord, send comfort and peace to those who are grieving the loss of their loved ones. O oh, great King of love, let the leaves of the tree of life bring healing to your people. O oh God, bless our nation and world. Intercede for and intervene in our world issues and conflicts as we strive to bring peace, freedom, and justice to all. Protect our military forces here and around the world. We lift up their family members of all those who serve our country. Oh, sovereign God, we pray for peace in Ukraine and for all of the people there. Please give wisdom to President Biden, his political advisors, and the world leaders to work together for the best outcome of all. Bestow your glory on them and lift their heads to understanding and wisdom. Watch over all of them. O oh Lord, through the blood of Jesus Christ, triumph over evil and wickedness in the world so that we may be at peace. We pray all these prayers through our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever, as we pray, as he taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I invite you all to turn in your hymnals to 881 as we affirm our faith together with the Apostles' Creed, and then we shall sing the Gloria Patre on page 70. Let's I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. <coughs>
bow our heads for a prayer. O oh God, your word is more precious than fine gold and sweeter than purest honey. As we turn to your scripture for today and send your Holy Spirit to infuse your word with truth and grace so that the good news of your love would shine before our eyes. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Today's scripture is Numbers 22 through 21 through 34. This is the story of Balaam's donkey and the angel. So Balaam rose in the morning and saddled his donkey and went with the princes of Moab. But God was very angry when he went, and the angel of the Lord stood in the road to oppose him. Now Balaam was riding on the donkey, and his two servants were with him. And the donkey saw the angel of the Lord standing in the road with a drawn sword in his hand. And the donkey turned aside out of the road and went in, into the field. And Balaam beat her to get her back on the road. Then the angel of the Lord stood in a narrow path between the vineyards with a wall on either side. And when the donkey saw the angel of the Lord, she pushed against the wall and pressed Balaam's foot against the wall, so he beat her again. Then the angel of the Lord went ahead and stood in a narrow place where there was no way to turn either to the right or to the left. When the donkey saw the angel of the Lord, she lay down under Balaam, and Balaam's anger was kindled, and he struck the donkey with his staff. Then the Lord opened the mouth of the donkey, and she said to Balaam, What have I done to you, that you have to beat me these three times? And Balaam said to the donkey, Because you have made a fool of me. I wish I had a sword in my hand, for then I would I wouldn't kill you right now. And the donkey said to Balaam, Am I not your donkey, on which you have ridden all your life long to this day? Is it my habit to treat you this way? And Balaam said, No. Then the Lord opened the eyes of Balaam, and he saw the angel of the Lord standing in the way with the drawn sword in his hand. And Balaam bowed down and fell on his face, and the angel of the Lord said to him, Why have you beat your donkey these three times? Behold, I have come to oppose you because your way is perverse, greedy, and reckless before me. The donkey saw me and turned away from me these three times. If she had not turned aside from me, I would certainly have killed you by now and would let her, have let her live. Then Balaam said to the angel of the Lord, I have sinned, for I did not know that you were standing in the road to oppose me. Now, therefore, if you are displeased, I will go back. And the angel of the Lord said to Balaam, Go with the men, but speak only what I tell you. This is the word of God for the people of God. The name of our sermon today is Blessings or Curses. Let us pray. Almighty God, mold us and guide us into your disciples who are listening to and obeying your word. Bless the words of my mouth and the sermon to speak understanding and wisdom to the hearts of your people. Use my words and thoughts for your glory. We pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Well, life has taught us many lessons if, if only we are attentive to hear and to perceive what is being taught to us. For sometimes our minds are closed. Sometimes our minds are idle. Sometimes our minds are set like concrete. Very little teaching of the school of experience is by lecture. Experience does its work mainly by examples given to us in our life. But the issue is that we don't always recognize our teachers and sometimes we are slow to learn. Many years ago, there was a man recorded in scripture who was noted to be a wise man. His name was Balaam. It was said that he had the power to put curses on people or even on cities and nations. Or, on the other hand, he also had the power to pronounce blessings on them. So people would hire Balaam to speak his blessings or his curses. Balaam finds a way into our Bible because one day 
King Balak of Moab tries to enlist his services to curse the nation of Israel. That story is told in Numbers 22, verses 1 through 21. Then the wise man, Balaam, discusses the project with God. And God told him immediately to reject the offer. You see, the nation of Israel was the apple of God's eye, and Balaam was told to avoid any negative business with her. But Balaam had an appetite for worldly goods and for prestige. So when King Balak came with a better offer than God had had, Balaam decided, hmm, I better think this over. The delegation told Balaam that the king would reward him handsomely if he would just accept the offer. Well, in a series of very peculiar experiences, Balaam decides to accompany the delegation to see if perhaps he might curse Israel after all, even though he knew that God had warned him not to. This meant that Balaam had to travel by the major mode of ancient transportation, a donkey. Fortunately, though, Balaam had a very good donkey. He had served him faithfully for many years. But on this journey, the donkey began to act very strange. Listen as I continue to tell the story. And in this particular situation, the donkey becomes a teacher to Balaam, the wise man. As they traveled to meet King Balak, the donkey suddenly saw something that Balaam and his delegation did not see. It was an angel right there in the middle of the road. The donkey walked out into the field to avoid the obstruction. This seemed especially wise since the angel was standing there with a drawn sword. Balaam, in his ignorance, beat the donkey to get it back on the road. Well, a little further down the road, the path, there was a path between two vineyards And the angel of the Lord appeared again. This time, as the donkey tried to avoid the angel, the donkey crushed Balaam's foot against the vineyard wall. And again, Balaam beat the animal again for the mishap of hurting his foot. Then, the angel of the Lord relocated once again to a place so narrow that there was no room to turn to the left or turn to the right. So the donkey lay down. Now, Balaam was angrier than ever, and he beat the donkey again. And no doubt, this beating was harsher than before because Balaam's anger had increased against his donkey The Bible tells us that at this point, the Lord opened the donkey's mouth. And the donkey spoke to Balaam and said, What have I done to you that you have struck me these three times? And Balaam answered, I am a wise man and you have made me a fool of me. And then he told the donkey that if he had had a sword with him, he would have killed the donkey. Balaam may have had several problems, but one of the most serious problems that he had was that he did not recognize a teacher when he met one. As I said in the very beginning of the sermon, that our biggest problem in the school of experience is that we do not recognize our teachers sometimes. Poor, poor Balaam. 
He didn't know that his donkey was one of his teaching aides in the school of life that day. The donkey spoke again. Am I not your donkey, which you have ridden all your life to this day? And have I ever been in the habit of treating you this way? Well, for Balaam, instead of apologizing to the donkey, Balaam got mad. And so often that is our reaction, too, when we don't understand things. We curse the situation instead of learning from them. Balaam had been offered praise and a gift of money from the king. The delegation had told him how wonderful he was. Sometimes when we think too highly of ourselves, we are poor students. The process of learning always requires a certain measure of humility in life. That day, the donkey was a teacher and Balaam refused to learn from him. I don't know about your specific circumstances in your life. I have no idea who your teachers have been in your school of experience. Neither have I ridden on your particular donkey. But this is advice I would give this morning as you mount your donkey, the donkey of experience. Thank God for it. Resolve that you will learn from it. Praise our sovereign God that he is in control and that none of this is a surprise to God. Don't run away from your experiences. Instead, embrace your experiences. You don't kick your donkey. You ride your donkey to your next destination. Don't get ambushed by anger. Don't simmer in your anger and let Satan win in your life. Let life teach you your next lesson. Ask God to give you understanding to learn from your experiences. Jesus, many years later, teaches his disciples a very hard lesson in Luke chapter 6, verse 27 through 36. You see, at that time, the Jews despised the Romans because they oppressed God's people. But Jesus told his disciples to love their enemies. Jesus was teaching his disciples to act according to God's will, for love is greater than hate. Jesus said to them, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who mistreat you. Do to others as you would have them do to you. Love your enemies. Do good to them. Lend to them without expecting to get anything back. Then your reward will be great, and you will be sons and daughters of the Most High God. Be merciful, just as your Father in heaven is merciful. This kind of love and mercy takes a conscious choice from all of us. Love those who hate you. Love those who have mistreated you. Love those who have spoken evil of you. And pray for them. Wow. Jesus loved the whole world, even the people who crucified him. Love means acting and doing good and praying for our enemies. It means blessing those who hurt us instead of cursing them. Love means turning the other cheek. Wow. Can we learn from Jesus in our school of experience? 
our behavior should not be governed according to judgment or condemnation or revenge or retaliation or retribution. We are simply to love others, bless others, and forgive others, period. Whether they are friend or foe, this is the higher vision that God is calling us to embody as his disciples. I recently read a story on Facebook called Love What Matters. I think it sums up the lesson in the school of experience. I was waiting in a line for a ride at the airport when a cab pulled up. The very first thing I noticed was that the taxi was polished to a bright shine. A smartly dressed cab driver in a white shirt, black tie, and freshly black pressed black slacks jumped out, rounded the car, and opened the back passenger door for me. The driver, Wasu, slid behind the wheel and asked, would you like a cup of coffee? I have a thermos of regular and a thermos of decaf. Then Wasso told me that he had the heater on and asked if the temperature was comfortable for me. Tell me, Wasso, have you always served your customers like this? He says, oh no, not always. My first year, five years of driving, I spent most of my time complaining like all the rest of the cabbies do. And then I heard about the power of choice. That message, the power of choice, is that you can be a duck or you can be an eagle. If you get up in the morning expecting to have a bad day, you'll rarely be disappointed yourself. So stop complaining. Don't be a duck. Be an eagle. Ducks quack, 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 quack all day, complain all day, while eagles soar above the crowds and rise above the winds. The cab driver said, that story made a lot of sense to me. And he continued, I knew the story was about me and about my life. I was always quacking like a duck and complaining. So I decided to change my attitude and become an eagle. I looked around at the other cabs and their drivers. The cabs were dirty. The drivers were unfriendly. The customers were unhappy. So I decided to make some changes. I made a few changes at a time. And when my customers responded well, I did more. I said, I take it that that paid off for you. Well, Wasu replied, it sure has. My first year as an eagle, I doubled my income from the previous year. And this year, I'll probably quadruple it. My customers call me for an appointment on my cell phone and leave a message for me to come pick them up. Wasu made a different choice. He decided to stop quacking like the ducks and started soaring like the eagles. He decided to bless others and not curse them. I hope that we all can decide to soar like an eagle and not quack like a duck. I hope we all decide to bless others, not to curse them. After all, let's learn from our story of Balaam. We need to listen to God's voice and obey God's word to us. Our message today is those who kick their donkeys will sometimes get kicked in return, but those who ride their donkeys will reach their next destination. 
So my friends, as you mount your donkeys, your donkey of experience in the school of life, thank and praise God for it and resolve to learn from it. Let us pray. Dear God, thank you for the lessons we have learned in life. Thank you for the opportunity to love and bless others, even our enemies. It is not easy to bless those who insult us and to pray for those who abuse us, but you summons us to love. Yes, love even the ungrateful and offensive people. Help us all to stop quacking with the ducks and start soaring with the eagles. Jesus, please continue to teach us what love is and that love is greater than hate. We pray in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I invite you to turn in your hymnals to 648. This hymn, God the Spirit, Guide and Guardian, asks us to seek God in all of creation. It asks us to see Jesus as our greatest teacher and as our healer. Each verse is a prayer to embrace our differences, asking God for signs of blessing and power of love. It is a prayer to send us out into this community around us as bold apostles to the world around us. May it be so. Let us stand and sing praise to God, hymn number 648.
The scriptures say, come into God's courts and give glory to his name. Bring offerings to him in the sanctuary and praise his name. Let us give our generous gifts, tithes, and offerings to God. You may give, leave your offerings in the plate at the back, or you may mail them in to the church office. Now let us sing our doxology. After you receive the benediction, we would ask you to be seated and listen to our handbells play our postlude. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and to lift us from the dark valley of despair to the mountain of hope, from the midnight of desperation to the daylight of joy. Now to him who is the only wise God, be glory and majesty and power and authority now and forevermore. As you leave the sanctuary this morning, know that you go with the blessings of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God and the people of God said, Amen. Amen. Thank <laughs> you. 